No, I never have. I've never, even in 20 years of law enforcement, I never shot anybody. In fact, I never even slugged anybody in 20 years of law enforcement. I never hit anybody with my nightstick. Never tased anybody. I never, I never tased you, bro. You know, and I, I never, I never maced anybody. I never, I never slapped anybody. And and yet I spent 20 years in law enforcement. 10 years of that on the streets. And have any of you ever shot at innocent students at a university in Ohio? and killed innocent students. Have any of you ever done that? No? Have any of you just recently in last year's election, did any of you go to voting polls and prevent people from voting like the Black Panthers did? Did any of you do any of that? No, we didn't do that. And yet, the Southern Poverty Law Center makes no mention of those types of things. But just those of us who believe in the right to keep and bear arms and in our constitution and in freedom for all people, we get labeled and attacked. And my good friends with the uh, Oath Keepers have been attacked and attacked and attacked by these people. And all they're saying is, keep your oath. Keep your word. Why is that a threat to anyone? Why do we say when freedom is for everyone and the Constitution should be enforced, is that a threat to anyone? Well, yeah, it's a threat to politicians who have replaced our Constitution with their own selfish political agendas. And now we're going to stop that. We're going to change that. And how do we do it? We start right here with the county sheriff. And this is an amazing thing right here. It's my old sheriff badge in the middle of the Constitution. The county sheriff, America's last hope. And maybe the subtitle now should be the theory of interposition. Your sheriff is to interpose, put himself in the way for you. When the, when the tyrants of Washington, D.C. come to take away your bank accounts or to conduct random audits. And any constitutional sheriff would know that random audits are unconstitutional. They're not allowed. Does your sheriff get to look around? Oh, oh, look at that home over there. Well, let's go over there and conduct a random audit to see if they're child abusers or to see if they're drug dealers. And he just goes in and conducts a random audit. The IRS does this all the time. But no other law enforcement agency in this country is allowed to do random audits. Why are we allowing an agency that has been used as a political hitman for presidents against their enemies and who have routinely, this, is testi this was testified to Congress by IRS employees. I'm not making this up, I'm just a messenger. I plagiarize everything, I'm just telling that right up front, okay? <laughs> At least I'm an honest plagiarist, okay? I'm the messenger here. Why is it that when their own IRS employees testify that the IRS routinely fabricates evidence against citizens, innocent citizens who they know cannot afford financially to defend themselves? And so they just pay the money or commit suicide or whatever else people do to escape the IRS. And your sheriff, knowing and understanding the real crimes behind the IRS, would not allow this to happen to his citizens because he swore an oath to the Constitution. And he swore to protect your constitutional rights. And so that's what I decided, finally, I'm going to put this out and let people know that I connected all the dots. And this is only 50 pages, taking about 40 minutes to read this. The, the cops and deputies and sheriffs can read this while they eat a donut, okay? <laughs> this is easy, okay? And it connects all the dots. And let me tell you some of the dots in here, okay? A lot of it is just from the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, and my Supreme Court decision. And let me show you one. The, the first principle on page one, it starts off with Thomas Jefferson. When all government shall be drawn to Washington as the center of all power, it will render powerless the checks provided and become as venal and oppressive as the government from which we separated, end quote. Folks, when government becomes venal and oppressive, to whom can we turn for peace, safety, and protection? Why not the individual who you voted for, who promised you in God's name that he, he would uphold and defend your constitutional rights? Why shouldn't we turn to him? He's the only elected law enforcement officer in the United States of America. We elected him 
to protect our rights. Now, he promised to protect us from the wolves. Does it really matter that the wolves happen to come from Washington, D.C.? We don't care where they come from. We don't care if they carry identification from some bureaucratic nightmare in Washington, D.C. We want protection and justice. Can you imagine anyone who promised you to provide you with peace, safety, and security, and justice, saying, oh, well, I don't have the jurisdiction. Uh, you'll just have to get your own lawyer and sue these people. You know, fight them in court and exhaust every dime you've ever owned and take the next 10 years of your life to lose something that you're gonna lose, to, to fight something you're gonna lose anyway. And then you end up in prison because you failed your random audit. Isn't this amazing? That we live in a country that's supposedly based on true principles of self-governance and independence, and yet our federal government says, you will monitor yourself financially for us, we will audit you whenever we want, and if you fail, we'll throw you in prison. Folks, that's not America. And your sheriff can get your America back to you. And then the next point I want to make right here in the book is um, page 15. And it quotes the Supreme Court decision that I just showed you a minute ago. And it says this. This is right from Scalia. United States Supreme Court, folks. The supreme law here, okay? And some of you might say, oh, well, the Supreme Court can't make law. No. They can make law. They can enforce the supreme law of the land, which is the ultimate law. And that's why this one works, because it is enforcement of the supreme law of the land. Quote, the great innovation of this design was that our citizens would have two political capacities, one state and one federal. Get the kicker here. Each protected from incursion by the other. What? Each protected from incursion by the other. So whose job is it to protect you from the incursions of the federal government? State and local governments. And it even gets more clear than that. And you know what Scalia's doing? He's plagiarizing also. You know who he just quoted? James Madison. Can you imagine that? A Supreme Court decision, a landmark decision that has been hidden from you for the last 12 years. This came out June 27, 1997. How many of you have heard any of this? Any of your politicians, governors talking about this? You'll have a governor talking about it pretty soon. Okay? Now, it goes on. Quote, the local or municipal authorities, the local or municipal authorities form distinct and independent portions of the supremacy. The supremacy. We're supreme. We're sovereign. No more subject within their respective spheres to the general authority or the federal government than the general authority is subject to them within its own sphere. Folks, my dear brothers and sisters of America, where and how do we define the sphere of the federal government? Article 1, Section 8, United States Constitution. If the federal government wants to go outside, Article 1, Section 8, its proscribed authority by the Constitution, if they want to get creative, if they want to expand the bureaucracy, if they want to have nationalized socialistic health care, what must they do? Refer to the Tenth Amendment. They cannot do it unless we allow it, we acquiesce, we give in. Because why? We want the federal funding, we want highway funds. And finally, we'll have a governor, maybe the first one in America who won't just talk about state sovereignty, but who will act upon it and say, we will protect the sovereignty of this state. And then the government goes, well then we're gonna cut off all federal funding. And then you have a governor by, the last name of Medina, and she goes, hallelujah! <laughs>